Okay, let's start it all over, okay? Let's start all over. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Chew Stream. Hopefully, uh, you can see my screen now. Right on. Technical difficulties. It's all good. I don't know what the heck it was, uh, what the input was coming from, or where the input was coming from. Apparently, it was coming from a camera of sorts. Um that I didn't even know I had, so kind of spooky, I don't know, uh, anyhow, great to be on the stream, how's it going everybody, hopefully everybody is doing awesome, we're about to start a new uh, exercise here, as you can see you can go underneath the video in live stream and click on the link to download this file and paint along with me, okay, if you're watching this on YouTube, after the stream, you can click on the link that you see there on the screen, and that will go directly to um, the page where you can enter your email, download this file, and uh, join up with ChewStream. Be notified of upcoming uh, streams, news, good stuff. You know, all stuff towards artists. So, all right. Hopefully, everybody's doing awesome. Oh, some shout-outs already. Hey everybody, so we got Alexi from Moscow. Ch -ch 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 Gigi Soul Sister from San Diego. Feeling good today, feeling uh, energized. Got my coffee, woke up nice and early. Oh, high five from Japan from Itza Kelly. Nice, right on. Uh, you got Singapore, London, Serbia. Uh, North Carolina, Mexico, Brazil, Texas, Mr. Clark, right on, uh, Wales, and uh, Christianburg, India, London, New Hampshire, so international, yeah, of course, Ireland, Chicago, you know why? Because there's people all over the world like you and me. People that are hungry to learn, to improve, to get better. It doesn't matter where you are in life. You know, you can never master art. Even if you're successful, you still have a long way to go. And the more that you know, the more you realize that you have a long way to go. You know, so there's all sorts of people like us around the world. That's why it's so good to give the shout out in the morning. You got Pennsylvania. Los Angeles, Florence, New Brunswick, Dallas, Texas, Taiwan. What's up, Taiwan? I was born in Taiwan, by the way, if, in case uh, any of you were wondering. Came to Canada when I was about two years old. Okay, so here is the you know exercise for today. Last week we did a woman's head. Today we're doing a man's head. Next time we're going to do a completely different exercise, and but it's always nice to kind of go back to a subject, change it up slightly, and uh, if you did last week's subject, last week's exercise, you're going to find this one slightly easier because you've already done uh, last week's ex exercise on a woman's head, and you're going to find all these wonderful correlations, connections between what you learned last week to this week. And before we do that, you know, as you can see, um, I did record this, I did record this uh, video beforehand, that way I can, uh, you know, read your questions, answer your questions, and you don't have to see the painting stop. So I want to give some big Chew Stream shout outs to uh, some wonderful people that have uploaded their images and hashtagged it Chew Stream. And you can see their Twitter handle or their Instagram handle, things like that. Uh, Monica, you can see such a wonderful uh, job here where she's you know she's just starting she's just starting and you can see that the images get progressively better until the last one which is completely on a different level than the first one that's what's all about today okay that's what's about every day that these are just warm-ups these are warm-ups it doesn't matter what it is that you end up painting 
what matters is how much effort you're putting in there to uh, to try to visualize what it is you're going to paint before you paint it okay and trying to visualize you know more and more clearer and clearer visualizing is the most powerful way to think okay so that's what it's all about today even though I gave you a, the head of a man where um, you know he has pretty chiseled like features that doesn't mean that we can't uh, use that base to create you know a heavier set man a rounder face person things like that the head is only a you know reference for your it's worked at or it's used as like an inspiration getting a little tongue tied here using a little using the image for a little inspiration to create your own creation okay and it doesn't matter if you paint in or you draw in a more cartoony way as you can see some of those examples they were a lot cartoonier um, this exercise is designed to help uh, strengthen your particular style your particular uh, imagination and your creations that's why it's so effective so if you're doing the exercises with me don't stop there you know post them on Twitter on Instagram on whatever it is and hashtag it chew stream okay hashtag CHIU stream S T R E A M, and I'll be able to find it, and then I'll post some, you know, every once in a while, and and spread the good vibes. Okay, now Sherpa is saying that you were not able to download the file. That's kind of odd. Um, it should work. The link that I gave you. If you just type in your email address, if you already typed it in last time, it's it becomes your login. You know, you just click on the file or cl click on the uh, link. Uh, you know, put in your email, and you should get a prompt to download. Um, I'm actually downloading it right now off of another computer just to see if it works. It does seem to work so perhaps you can refresh try it again okay never stop when you hit bumps in the road okay so mr clark from texas is on point he knows that you can ask whatever questions you'd like into the chat and uh, I will answer as many of them as possible okay so mr. Clark's question uh, goes uh, if you could get any artist in the world to teach on schoolism that you don't have teaching already who would it be I would have a class by character designer Carter Goodrich that's what uh, mr. Clark is saying Carter Goodrich a modern day uh, you know master you know what that's how I pick the teachers that I want to teach on schoolism the ones that I approach they are the ones that I want to learn from so I'm very proud to, to say that I've already gotten quite a few of the people that I desperately wanted right like um, even if they can't teach online many of them I've gotten to teach in a live workshop like Craig Mullins announced Craig Mullins this week holy smokes you know Craig Mullins um, I don't think I'm the one to have made this up but uh, I kinda feel like he is the godfather of digital painting I don't know how he feels about that uh, name <laughs> probably doesn't like it that much but uh, yeah 
I totally feel like he is the godfather of digital painting. Like so many um, people have been just inspired and changed because of Craig Mullen's paintings. He was painting with a mouse before the tablet. You know, he was pretty much the first person I ever known to paint digital paintings where it looked just so good. It was unbelievable. It was awe-inspiring. Very few people that I would call a master at painting, and he's one of them. You know, we also have some really incredible um, teachers like Daisatsumi and Robert Kondo that I wanted... I wanted them to teach on schoolism so bad and when I finally got them to teach it was like I couldn't believe it um, people that I would love to te teach on schoolism online that I don't have right now I'm calling out my buddy Marcelo Vignali holy smokes awesome teacher awesome teacher and I'd also call out my friend Peter Desev. Oh, that would be incredible. You know, the thing is, these guys can both teach extremely well. The thing is that some artists are amazing, but they can't teach that well. So it is kind of difficult because you have to find a person that is amazing, incredible, leading the industry kind of incredible, and can teach and has time to teach that's a difficult thing but you know I was having this conversation with um, with Shren here from Singapore you can say hi Shren hi, hi. <laughs> she's she's sitting here beside me you know all the way from Singapore um, you know hang out in the studio and uh, so we were talking and I was just talking about how a lot of people they ask what was that one thing that that really you know propelled your career the most or that one thing that you know helped you get whatever teachers or whatever it might be okay um, you know what is that one thing there is no one thing and I was just talking about this with her um, you know, it's all about the slow play, where it's not, and you know what, for me, it wasn't like on purpose creating all these slow plays, but it's just more like you meet a person, you talk with them, you treat them well, even though you might not have anything to do with each other right now, you keep doing that, you make that a habit, treating people well whether they can help you or not what a concept you know so you do that and then later on years later on all of a sudden you're doing maybe an animated comic book and now this person has moved on to Amazon Studios and then she calls you up and says oh now I'm working at Amazon Studios I want to take your animated comic book and make it into a, you know animated series you know, all sorts of these type of things happen all the time. Uh, you know, when you treat people well and you don't be the wallflower and you say hi to everybody and you make, um, you make the most out of every opportunity. You know, how did I, how did I meet, say, you know, Alex Wu? I met him from first from a, a wedding, uh, Bill Pressing, this other incredible story artist uh, at Pixar, um, and it was his wedding, and it was in Mexico. And how did I know Bill from just first San Diego, talked to him a little bit, then France, then talked to him a bit more, hung out with him a little bit, and then just hung out you know every so often um, you know and then Alex same kind of thing met in a wedding in Mexico then met again at a charity event then met again and you know asked them to be on schoolism and then the rest was history
so it, it was never about this like magical line that I would say to people to you know convince them to teach on schoolism it wasn't like that at all it was more like good habits that you would constantly have right you would constantly do speak to people and especially when they have nothing to provide for you be nice to them trust me even even though that is the right thing to do that's you know the nice thing to do is just to be nice to people whether they can help you or not but I'll tell you something if you're not totally convinced yet the people that I respect the most that are the closest to me the majority of them I met when they are doing awesome already and I was not and I was a no-name and they had no reason to be nice to me but they were you know that is the most genuine you can get and that's something that I've remembered for the rest of my life and uh, you know always try and pay it forward whenever I see them again things like that they always have a good place in my heart you know so something to think about something to think about always trying to give positive vibes out there into the world not just because it's you know something nice to do but because it's the right thing to do you know and on the flip side you will be rewarded if you practice this guaranteed you'll see great things happen because you've been a nice person okay anyways let's go on to another question now so question goes how does this work I paint the head along with you and upload it after any hashtags yes hashtag it chew stream the heads that you're painting it can be the same kind of uh, character that I'm painting if you like absolutely but if not just paint your own thing and the thing is don't look at any reference go with it go with your imagination when you go with reference a lot of times that's good too but in this exercise I'm saying just go with your imagination okay because if you go with reference every time too much you don't really expand your mental library as much as quickly okay so somebody else has a question here have you ever thought about accepting challenges from the community and incorporating them to use as a tutorial um I haven't just yet you know never say never but what I'd like to do with these streams and what I've been doing with these streams is creating exercises for people um, the same kind of exercise that I've done over many many years and and still continue to do now that will help your artistic uh, skills improve and also is you know a great opportunity to just uh, answer some questions and things like that now um, yeah, why don't we go to the next question here so the next question says if you get to talk to a person you want to work with what do you talk to them about instead of forcing them to look at your portfolio or uh, giving opportunity sorry I'm just trying to paraphrase uh, the question here okay so if you get to ch talk to a person that you'd love to work with what do you talk to them about instead of forcing them to look at your portfolio or giving you an opportunity to work with them but still making it work what a good question 
again, that is totally all about the slow play. You know, don't ask them to to work with them, you know, right away. Definitely. Um, try to get to know them as a person. You know, I think that was one of the best things that has happened to me is just the fact that I'm just always interested in people's lives. You know, always interested in getting to know what's so special about all these people I meet. And it isn't about what can they do for me. Because I'm just more intrigued about what what it is, you know, what they're all about. Um, and you'll find when you keep doing this and you show them, you know, eventually you show them what you do and stuff like that, um, that helps out a lot. And if you want to know a little tip, you can do things like you can uh, you can say something that needs more explanation if the person's really interested in it so for example you know this latest project uh, I'm just so excited about you know because it's the first time I got to work with an Oscar winning director maybe that's that's your line okay and then you go back to them so what are you working on you know, and and they could either talk about what they're working on, or talk about they're working on what they're working on, and then they're going to ask you, so what what director is that? And then that gives you a good excuse because they've asked you now. It gives you a great excuse to elaborate on what it is that you are doing. But if you go to somebody and you go, hey, how's it going? I'm a big fan. You know, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know, it's like. it's not as natural it doesn't really you know it won't get the person as interested as if they approached you same thing with um, you know like jobs when somebody approaches you for a job versus if you approach that same person for a job who do you think would what situation would would make that employer offer you more money you know of course it would be the one the situation where the employer seeks you out and asks you to do something for them instead of you asking them how do you do that you know how do you have this famous artist talk to you and ask you about your stuff and see your portfolio you know what it is it's that you don't just ask one you know famous successful artist you ask 50 you talk to 50 of them a hundred of them right and try to actually get to know them instead of saying everything that you want to say about yourself and your art and things like that which is all great but try to genuinely you know try to learn about people you know, one of them is guaranteed to want to learn about you. Same thing with the employers. You know, like, I'll talk to whoever. Maybe we'll work together in the future. I don't know. But I'm talking to whoever. It doesn't matter. Out of a hundred employers, you know, I haven't asked to do any work for them unless they are talking about it to me. And eventually, that's what happens. They will talk to you about it and, and ask, you know, what do you do and things like that. And that's your opportunity to show, right? And that's what it's all about. It's all about the constant habits, good habits of not being the wallflower. Always talking to people. Always trying to help people. Always trying to find out what they're all about what's interesting about them, what makes them special, stuff like that. And in turn, it's reciprocal. People will want to know what makes you so special. I know this is, you know, it sounds like it doesn't have to do with art, but it has to do so much with art 
you don't even understand. A lot of times people don't even understand. Because what is art? Art is somewhat of a popularity contest, whether we want to admit it or not. How many people are going to look at our stuff, like it, you know, things like that. It becomes kind of like this weird popularity contest. If an artist has no likes, no friends on Facebook, no nothing, no comments, and you look at the painting and it's pretty good, you're going to be like, yeah, it's all right, I guess, yeah, it's okay. But if you see a painting that's, yeah, I guess it's really is like kind of okay, but they have all these shares, all these friends, all these comments, all these likes, you're going to look at that painting in a different light now. You're going to all of a sudden look at it and go, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's pretty good, right? It's, it's funny like that. I don't like it, but nowadays the internet it is the new resume. So be careful what you post. And try to constantly post. So that you're constantly, you know, um, relevant. And a tip, you know, if I can find dumb pictures or comments from you, other people can too. So, you know, don't be an idiot <laughs> online. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's go to another question here. Um, next question is, if you get to talk to a person you want to work with. Oh, sorry. Oh, I just did that one. Uh, next question. I've taken a break from freelancing, and in my downtime, I'm trying to improve my relationship with art. Is there anything you'd suggest to artists that are hesitant to jump back into the rat race? You know, that's that's just our stupid brains talking to us. It's not our mind. You know, our brains are full of good habits and bad habits. And I feel like that's just one of those bad habits. Because your mind, you, your spirit will for sure tell you, go for it. That's what you need to do. That's what you need to do to be happy. Go for it. You know, sometimes our brains will tell us things like, mm, I'm tired. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to draw anymore. Let's go watch House Cards you know, season three, which was awesome, by the way. But, um, you know, it'll just tell you all sorts of things. And sometimes you need to smack that, just, just wrestle it down, smack it in the face. Smack that voice down and tell it, shut up. I'm in control here. I know what I need to do. I want to be an artist. So what do I need to do? I need to just do that first step. What is that first step? Get my materials out. Is it a piece of paper? Is it uh, booting up the computer? What is it? Let's do that first step. Okay, what's the second step? And just do it. And I'm sure all of us agree, once you actually start drawing, if you're an artist, you're going to keep drawing. You're going to keep drawing at least for a little bit. A lot of times when you just start drawing, that's the thing that you needed, you know, to keep going for a good while. So don't worry about the rat race. I think you're thinking about too many things. I think you're thinking about the the overall grand scheme of things. And when we, when we look at epic grand schemes of things, epic grand plans and things like that, to to accomplish those plans, all of a sudden seems like climbing a mountain. Just look for the first step. You know, just look for the first step until you get some momentum, and then you can look around and and look at uh, how much further you have to go and things like that. Okay. But you know what? That is something that um, so many of us go through 
you know, just sitting there and thinking, I should draw, I should do something, I should draw. Success is inevitable if you choose to believe it's my duty to try. It's my obligation to try and just do that first step. Do it now. Start drawing with me. Draw on this head, you know, paint along with me. And if anything, you just, you don't have to uh, think about, you know, everything that you need to do. All you need to think about is just trying. Okay, anyways, let's go on to the next uh, question here, which is... Um, Okay, the next question goes, what advice would you give to someone who is 35 and wants to change his life or her life, starting, or start over working with art, even moving overseas? Hey, it's totally doable. It's completely doable. Um, you know, I had this uh, testimonial that I put on my YouTube page. It's a while back. Fred Lang. If you're out there, Fred, you know, it was so great meeting you because Fred told me a story that was awesome. 40 years old. He's a police officer. If I get any of these details wrong, it's just coming from my memory, okay? But the gist of it is that he's 40 years old. He's a police officer. He doesn't want to be a police officer all his life. Deep down inside, that's just a job, and wh who he really is, is an artist. So he just gave it his all. Started taking one schoolism class after the other, and then within like a year and a half, a year, something like that, he wasn't just working, he was working on Star Wars uh, toys, Hasbro stuff, and all sorts of awesome jobs. You know, and he was 40. My buddy uh, Anthony Jones, he was a plumber until age 26, I believe. Right? And uh, his main goal was to work at Blizzard. He got to work at Blizzard before he quit. <laughs> but he did. He got to his goal. You know what I mean? Um... So it's it's all completely, completely doable. You know, we all have unlimited artistic power. And the only key you need to unlock it is just effort. Put in the effort and you'll see. You'll show everybody and they'll see. But the thing is, you got to put in enough effort. Just a few of the sun's rays going through a magnifying glass, nothing happens. But you get all those sun's rays coming through that magnifying glass, and you get fire. You get ignition. That's what we're trying to do here, people. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create some fire. You know, and that's not going to happen by rubbing two sticks together slowly. You need intensity. You need to give it your all, especially when you want to go from one level of your life to something completely different, a completely different level. You need to have intensity, but it's completely doable. You know, people that don't think that they have the skills, you're selling yourself short. You know, you just haven't invested enough time into your craft yet. That's it. So let's keep going, okay? Let's keep going. All right. Let me grab this uh, couple questions here. And if you have any questions, you could type them into the chat there. And you can see at this point, 
I've erased the, the face of the uh, template that I was working from, right? Just like what I said before, it's kind of like riding a bicycle, learning how to ride a bike. The head that you're working from is like the uh, training wheels for your bicycle. You're going to work with them a bit. You're going to just draw. You're going to try to do it what you can and just draw these heads out things like that once you get comfortable then erase a part of it and start from even less and even less and even less until eventually you're drawing three-quarter you know view heads from nothing right now if you're more of a beginner definitely just keep with the template here okay and don't erase anything because really, it's not about how much you do, it's, it's about how hard you're trying, how much you're improving. Right, that really matters. Okay. Let's go to the next question here, which is... Uh, There are only OK artists who are very popular, so sometimes I wonder how that happens. Can you explain that better? What is the breakthrough? OK. Let me try to interpret your question a little bit. So, oh, what advice, or sorry, there are only OK artists who are very popular. So let's, I guess, let's change that to Sometimes there are artists that are okay, but are very popular. Um, you know, you wonder how that happens. Well, first, the idea always trumps the, the technical skills. As much as we you know, strive to learn better and better technical skills, um, it won't matter that much if we don't have good ideas. We all know about the fad or the thing that became really popular, but it's actually kind of dumb. Or you know, it doesn't look that cool technically. Like for example, South Park. Well, I love South Park. Is it the best drawn stuff in the world? No, not really. It's not meant to be. It's the ideas that they are uh, conveying that makes it so funny and you know, hilarious and things like that. And it's so popular. So number one, it's about the idea. Number two, it's about the interaction. Are you just posting stuff where you're not really explaining what you're posting or anything like that? Or when you post it, are you just posting like, here is a drawing of a tiger. Here is a drawing of an apple. Here is a sketch I did this morning. You know, or are you putting some personality into it, right? Like a little bit of yourself in there. You know, like, um, so hungry this morning. But the light was just right, had to draw it first, and then you show an apple. You know, it just has that much more engagement to it, more life to it, things like that. The other thing that you want to work on is consistency. I don't care how often you're going to post something, just make it consistent, because it'll help you even more. Whether it's every day, or every month, or whatever it is, just make sure that that is consistent, that you will be posting every month, and hopefully on the exact same day, on the exact same time, more consistency is better. Okay, and of course, talking with others. You know, are you just posting and commenting to the people that are commenting on your post, or are you actually, you know, going out there and trying to trying to meet people virtually, trying to learn from them virtually, get to know people and stuff like that, and posting on their stuff. If you are constantly engaging people and stuff like that, they will 
eventually engage with you as well. Okay, let's go on to the next question here. Okay, so this one says, uh, in my country, there's not a good animation industry for concept artists and visualizers. How should I go about, how should I go about it in such a situation? Okay, so I, you know, Toronto has things going on. It has a nice uh, animation industry. It has a nice little film industry, things like that. But um, for the jobs that I like to do, you know, if somebody's going to call me up to work on their film, generally it's going to be a big budget film. And the best kind of jobs for that are not always in Toronto. Okay, so I, I don't really uh, take very many jobs at all. Actually, it's very rare that I'll take a job from somebody in Toronto. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, put down, we do have a nice healthy industry here, but you know what I'm saying, okay? So the jobs that I do, generally, they're coming from the source, like big budget kind of studios, and it's not like that studio hired another studio that hired another studio that talks to me. Um, so anyways, my point is that it's kind of like there's no difference if I lived in Toronto than if I lived in, you know, Indonesia. Because I do everything over the internet. So I'm very much doing uh, the thing that you're talking about here, which is in your country, there's not a lot of uh, good jobs that you want to do as a concept artist. So how do you go about in that situation? that's when the internet comes back into play. It's interesting, you know, it's very, it's such an interesting time right now because you have people coming up, these artists that are coming up, and they're great, you know, and they're getting better and better. But because they're not in the industry yet, they don't know anybody in the industry. Who do they know? They know the people that are online, right? And if you're working in the industry, you're working, you know, in San Francisco and in, in uh, LA or whatever it is, and you're doing awesome. Um, that doesn't mean that people across the sea know who you are. So, if you are doing stuff remotely, or if you are a person that is more of an independent artist, all of a sudden, your online presence becomes way more important. And that's what I would suggest for you, is to really hone in and pay a lot more attention to your online presence. Make sure that you have a presence. And you're constantly, constantly updating and things like that. And then also go to where there's other artists it doesn't have to be physically it could be annuals you know art annual spectrum uh, things like that and try to get yourself into those annuals and of course try to do some traveling you know I love to travel anyways but it, it turned out that that was a really really great thing for me to travel so much um, because in the end people want to work with people that they kind of get a sense that they're they have a personality that you would like to work with and it's very hard to get that personality without actually meeting you right so traveling's good then they can meet you and you can talk to them and things like that and and then uh, create those connections, those relationships. Okay. So let's go to the next question here, which is, um, I've been doing visualization 
sorry, am I reading the right one? Okay, I've been having trouble on these exercises due to lack of knowledge on men and women's haircuts. Is pulling reference for that sort of thing okay? Or just go with it, or go with lots of hats? Just try to figure it out. Do your best to figure it out. And then after the hour, take a look at some reference. That's what I suggest. You know, really struggle with it. Because when you really struggle with stuff, that's when the most creative breakthroughs happen. When you're just looking up answers, you don't really figure things out for yourself. Okay, so I definitely feel like it's a good idea to look up some reference after. You're going to do a way better job. Not only that, but when you start off by not looking at anything at all, you're going to come up with good questions like, hair, I just don't get it. How does it work? Then after the hour, you look at some reference and you're like, oh, oh, okay, I see. I see that kind of hair. That's how that one works. That's how this one works. That's how this one works. And so on and so forth. Claire Wendling, who is legendary in my books, she is just another one of those masters of her craft. Um, she said she did the same thing when, uh, when we, when she started, when she was, uh, you know, started drawing as a kid, she just tried to draw it out of her head and then look at what she did wrong, right? And looked it up and then tried it again. Okay, so next question. Okay, so um, next question says, I've been doing visualization warm-ups uh, with the heads before I start my sketches. I wonder if it's a good practice as well as doing visual visualization characters representing a life quote. So I guess um, the question really just means like I wonder if this is a good practice as kind of like a mantra for life to constantly practice visualizing. Yes! I would not uh, put so much emphasis on visualizing if it wasn't absolutely true, you know, visualizing is the most powerful way to think. And it's not just for art. Of course, art, it becomes extremely useful. You know, it's, it's like a way of thinking that will help every facet of your life. You know, for example, if you are constantly visualizing uh, how you're sounding to the person that you're talking to, it'll make you a much better communicator. You know, if you're just thinking from your side of things and you're, you know, you're trying to talk to your mom or your dad about uh, buying you a car or something like that, and, you, you know, you're just talking about why you want a car and not really thinking about it from their point of view then your chances won't be as good you know that's also uh, it also pertains to so many other things so many other things like when I am talking to a director and that director okay so here's a good example I get a character assignment. The actor that is playing that character wants some input. Tells the person, says, okay, I want, well, you know, these are all, uh, these are all notes for me. So notes on the character says, I want this person 
to feel like me, but I don't want him to look like me. I want this person to have the intensity in the eyes like Al Pacino, but I don't want him to look like Al Pacino. You know, I want him to be somewhat like James Bond, but I don't want anybody to make that correlation, that connection between that character and James Bond. You know, a lot of people would say, what is this person talking about? But that's the whole entire thing. You've got to visualize it from their point of view and really understand that, okay, they're saying that the person should feel like him, but not look like him. What does that mean? It means mannerisms. Put the person in certain mannerisms that that is the same as the, the actor playing uh, the character. The intensity in the eyes, like Al Pacino. He just wants the character to have intense expressions when you're presenting the character. You can have um, Al Pacino doing a weird expression, and he won't even look like Al Pacino. You know, if you took a photo, you'd be like, is that Al Pacino? Like that kind of thing if he's not doing an Al Pacino face, right? If he does an Al Pacino kind of expression, you're going to be like, oh, that's Al Pacino from super far away. You can totally, you can identify that. Okay, anyways, um, let's try to get to all the questions before our time is up. So, next question is, whenever I feel demotivated, I cannot get better. I come to watch your stream to refuel myself with inspiration and get back to my drawing board with a new outlook. Thanks for these streams. Oh, so it's not even a question. I just copied a nice comment to uh, to beef myself up, <laughs> to, uh, make myself sound better. Um, you know, I am humbled and I am so appreciative of the kind words. So thank you so much. And uh, let's go to a question. So next question is, Bobby, my class is not with me today because we are on spring break, but thank you for the advice and the encouragement. Oh, again, it's, I'm copying just statements. Uh, you know, you're very, very welcome. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a good thing to do, right? It's just a good thing to do. Spread the positive vibes. Um, next question is an actual question. When are you heading back to London, Bobby? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There's no immediate plans yet. Um, it might actually be 2016. I'm not sure. Okay, let's go to the next question. Bobby, would you please uh, recommend some good art forms where we can get uh, good feedback? Where you can get, okay, good art forms, good place to show your art, I would have to say Art Station and uh, CG Society. Um, to get good feedback, to get a lot of feedback, I would say more like your Facebook, DeviantArt. Um, there's way more interaction. Okay. So Sam Nielsen's course courses are my favorites. Both courses. Do you think he has a? Do you think he has a plan to stay in schoolism with his courses during 2016 too? Um, I guess what we're saying here is, does he plan to? keep his courses on schoolism in 2016? I would I would hope so. <laughs> Those courses are awesome. Uh, his whole theory of uh, just using a shaded ball, you know, lighting a ball to really start planning out the rest of your whole image and lighting for your whole image is incredible, especially when he starts talking about chrome things like things that are highly reflective how do you get more or less accurate kind of chrome uh, 
looks on things when you have to take into consideration all the things around you, you know, a car or, or a bicycle or a person or trees and sky and so on and so forth. Really, really good course. Um, yeah, let's talk about something that I want to talk about real quick. Um, workshops, you know, if you shared my post on Facebook or Twitter with the hashtag ChewStream, at in a few minutes I'm going to select a winner and uh, randomly pick somebody and give them a free Schoolism class or a free workshop in either uh, Montreal March 14th, 15th, which is just this weekend, Toronto, March 28th, 29th, or Calgary, April 20th, 21st. Very first one, Montreal. It's going to be with Carla Ortiz. It's going to be with Alex Wu, Paul Lazane, and Christophe Latrette. Toronto is going to be with director, Oscar winning director, Brenda Chapman. Director Kevin Lima, character designer Steven Silver, Sam Nielsen, concept artist we were just talking about, Claire Wenling, another amazing, amazing artist that we were just talking about, and dun, 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 announced yesterday for his very first time in Toronto, for his, you know, I don't even know when was the last time he ever did a workshop uh, or demo or whatever it, it, it might be. Um, one of my artistic heroes, Craig Mullins, is coming to Toronto. So that's going to be an all-star, all-star lineup. And then we also have um, Calgary, April 20th, 21st, after the Calgary Expo. So you could go to the Calgary Expo, stay for the Schoolism Workshop. We're going to have Steven Silver teaching character design, Nathan Fawkes teaching... Um, teaching some awesome stuff, two different workshops. I don't want to get it wrong, but uh, I think it's composition, okay, pictorial composition as one of the workshops, and the other workshop is uh, designing with color and light. And then we're going to have Stanley Art Germ Lau coming all the way from Singapore. He's going to be teaching how he illustrates. And if you look up his illustrations, just look up Art Germ. Wow. Dude can draw like nobody's business. And uh, his technique is really efficient, really awesome. So really looking forward to that. I hope you guys are too. Okay. Devin Adams asks, uh, what are... What art books are you currently reading? Um, art books... I can say art courses. So, uh, art courses, I've been watching Dice Tsumi and Robert Kondo's course, Painting with Color and Light. That's been the course that I've been on so far. After that, I'm going to do uh, Nathan Fawkes' Pictorial Composition course. Um, yeah. Shipra asks, can you arrange, can you arrange, uh, choose stream with your favorite artists from schoolism? You want me to rank the teachers on schoolism from favorite to least favorite? Uh, you know what? It's like pancakes and waffles. You can't, they're both good. You know, they're just different, right? So um, I will go through my phases. You know, I've gone through my Steven Silver phase, which is great. Um, Tom Flurity phase to really, when I was really getting to back into traditional painting, things like that. Uh, you know, Nathan Fawkes, of course, 
Sam Nielsen, of course, Jason Seiler. You know, something about Jason Seiler's course. Let me just stop right there. Uh, it's He teaches the art of character. But he doesn't just do character. He does portraits and things like that. And, and highly, highly realized stuff. Things that look quite real. Um, the students that take his course are one of the most transformed bunch out of you know all the different students taking all the different courses the people that leave his course are completely like night and day um, doing things on a whole nother level even though you know every course on schoolism I highly recommend uh, yeah, there you go. So let's go to the next question. Can we do an, a warm up where we just work on using three values like you mentioned in Dice and Roberts class? We can. Um, I have the next bunch all planned out, so I need, I want to do those first. Okay. Chris is asking, is it near the end of the stream yet? Yes, it is. Um, I'm going to be announcing a winner very soon uh, for the free schoolism class and Dustin Clark is saying I got a piece in the Society of Illustrators show after Jason's class Wow what an endorsement you know the Society of Illustrators is a very prestigious uh, group so that's awesome Riley is asking, are you and T still working together? Yeah, totally. My buddy T Bear in Saint Julien, just outside of Montreal, Canada. Um, you know, we used to have our workshop house in Toronto, Canada. T has always had this dream of moving back to Montreal where he's from. And so uh, last year he made that dream come true, bought a big old place just outside of Montreal in St. Julien. And uh, we do the workshop house there now. It's going to be really exciting to meet uh, all the new people at the workshop house in just a few days. Um, I hope they're excited too because we're all coming. Not just me, not just Kay, but... A whole mob of us. It's going to be awesome for the uh, Montreal workshop. It's going to be so, so great. Okay. So somebody's asking if the schoolism teachers could be guests on the stream. You know, never say never. Um, I have done that in the past. So we'll see we'll see okay uh, as for now let's take a look at the uh, winner of today's stream here let's go to okay so I either go to Facebook Instagram